Thank you very much, Ken Workington. Welcome, everyone, to Saturday Night at the Big M. And we are joined by Ronnie Burke, the man behind the Burke Brigade, the dominant stable in harness racing. I remember your dad, Mickey, racing horses at the Meadows in, like, the mid-'90s. When did you guys ramp it up to the national level? It was right about then. Uh, there was talk that the Meadows was going to get slots. And the idea was actually to come here and build a barn and to take it back home when the slots, you know, warranted having better horses. And uh, basically we got out here and decided, you know, we could also keep a barn here and build up a barn for back there. And it's basically the pattern we follow in going from track to track, you know, as the purses got better at each place. Now, when you were growing up, did you have a lot of interest in harness racing or did you play sports and do some other things? Yeah, no, I played sports. and. Uh, but it was pretty much, once I started actually racing, I wasn't a big fan of the horses when I was young. I was afraid of them. And then as I got older and uh, we started racing, you know, it was competitive and I liked that. I've got a bunch of topics I want to throw out. The first thing I want to talk to you about is feet. I remember interviewing your dad when he won some races here, I think in 2000, when you'd send horses out to Kelly Stankowitz, and he said, Sam, most of the horses I get, we inject their feet and work on their feet. A lot of horses have sore feet, especially racing on the limestone racetracks. Yeah, I think especially here, this, this track's tough on their feet and the fact that they go so fast and so long. You know, that's the thing about the Meadowlands. It's, it's still the one track where you win and you think you accomplish something. It's still harder to win here than anywhere. And another issue that you always seem to address with any new acquisitions is weight. I remember sitting by you at the Harrisburg sale and you said most horses you get, you'll take 50 to 100 pounds off them that you'd never see a marathon runner or an Olympic runner that has any extra weight. You believe that with the horses too. Yeah, pretty much, uh, you know, show me the first fat, fast guy, you know, and I'll, you know, fatten my horses. So I'm pretty big fan of like, you know, I don't want them to be starved to death, but I want them to be fit and look like athletes. And you train them like athletes, too. Ray Paver once told me, I said, what's the key to the Burks when he was driving for you at the Meadows? He said, Sam, they never send out a short horse. You guys are pretty aggressive with your training methods, especially the speed. Yeah, especially the quarters. And, we, you know, we sprint them a lot. We teach them to teach them to be fast. That's, you know, it sounds stupid, but that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're teaching them to go faster. Horses don't just naturally go out there and run at top speed the first time you ask them. You have to teach them to go fast. You've had extreme success with the racehorses and lately a lot of success with the Colts, namely Sweet Lou that comes to mind. Have you had to adapt those training methods and training approaches to fit the Colts? Yeah, thank God we usually keep the babies separate from the racehorses and you basically almost have to change hats when you're going there. You can't go there and put the hammer down on them. And it's been a little bit for me, it's, you know, sometimes I find I got to stay away from the better ones because it's still my natural tendency to push. So, you know, my dad's got a lot more patience than I do. And, uh, you know, it's probably better that he has them most of the time. And then I just come and, you know, push them when I want to see, you know, stake payment time, how much I want to, you know, spend up of my money and dad's money too. Ronnie, the numbers are flat out staggering. The starters, you've had over 3,100 in 09, over 3,700 in 2010, uh, 11 and uh, 12, I think you had like 4,100 starters. That's just amazing. How in the world do you keep track of it all? Uh, the biggest thing is we have a great system and great help. And, you know, it's not just me, it's everybody at every barn. And, you know, We've worked our way up to this. You know, we didn't start just racing 4,000 in one year. We've worked our way gradually, you learn. And I do, I have a, a great ability to memorize a lot of things and, you know, it comes into handy, you know. I tend to be able to, you know, retain most things that I see, especially if I see them on paper. And that helps me to, you know, just keep it going. And, and I enjoy it. If, you, if I didn't enjoy it and we all didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't be doing that and we wouldn't do as well. Ronnie, you've got some great owners and they're not afraid to spend money and spend serious money for top level horses. And a lot of times you have to race against each other at that top level. Is there such a thing as having too many really good horses? Yeah, I think maybe we've reached a point now where it's got to the point where sometimes I feel there's not as many races as there could be if maybe we spread these horses out uh, among other barns. But my guys love the sport. They love to go out and look for horses. They're all very into it. A lot of my guys, this is all they do. They don't have other jobs, so they do this full time. They Inquiring horses is their part of the job to make us all go where we're going to go. So, you know, they don't want to slack off, so we don't want to slack off. 
In this business, Ronnie, it seems like anybody that achieves success, a lot of people point fingers at them. And I'm sure you hear the whispers, what are the Berks using? They have an edge, they have an advantage. You came out in Harness Racing Update uh, two weeks ago, an article by Bill Finlay. You said, we do not cheat, we work hard, and that's how we win races. Do the rumors and the accusations and the uh, talk behind your back bother you at all? Yeah, no, it does bother me. It bothers me that the fact that, you know, drivers are always considered talented when they win races, you know, like I've said many times in this sport, it's trainer, you're at best, you're a hard worker, at worst, you're a cheater. You know, I, I don't, you know, we don't drug a little, we don't drug, you know, we all, we only use the little things or, no, we do none, absolutely none. And I don't care what anybody says, our barn's an open barn, anybody can come in and see, you know, there's cameras running at all times. And, you know, Jeff, we've offered it. They can come in. They can watch it the full time if they want. It's not a problem with us. When you have nothing to hide, you don't mind anybody coming. And you are a supporter of Bryce Cody in the Meadowlands, what we're trying to do as far as the testing and as far as kind of watching over the sport. Yeah, I would have been extremely disappointed if Gateway would have said, you know, that they couldn't come on to the grounds. You know, I love the fact that Gateway welcomed him with open arms, said, come when you want, you know, do what you know. You know, he's not coming in there to cause you problems. He's trying to find the people that are doing wrong things. If you aren't doing anything wrong, you should have no problem with him coming. Well, one of the horses you've done a lot right with, Sweet Lou, million-dollar winner last year, and had, a, had an excellent season, but we in the media hyped him up as the second coming. If you had anything to do different with him last year, would you made some changes at all? Yeah, I mean, you know, with, things didn't work out. It seemed like we were always in the wrong spot. Just, I don't know, it was bad luck. Maybe we overrated him. You know, we'll find out this year. He's going to come back this year. He's going to get a chance. And I think he was just so good that last start as a two-year-old that maybe we couldn't live up to expectations. And maybe the worst thing that happened was coming out the first start and looking so good. And then maybe we did push on too much. Maybe we should have been a little bit more, you know, raced a different style. But, you know, at the end of the year, he had had it turned around and things were going great. And then the last two starts, he had a bad foot and we just shut him down. So I never lost confidence in the horse. I still think he's, you know, the best horse in our barn. And, the best horse we've had. And do you think he'll step right up against the top level free for allers when you bring him back this summer? I don't know. You know, the thing is this year, the free for all level is going to be the best it has been in ages. The aged horses here are a lot of them that are carrying their speed into their later years. And you have the best group of three year olds that have come out in a long time. And a lot of them stayed. You know, Jeff encouraged people to keep on racing them to four. And I think it's going to make a big difference. You're going to have to be a wonderful horse now to win these races. There's not going to be anybody dominating, I don't feel, these races anymore. Well, let's take a look at your starters tonight for wagering purpose for our fans watching along our simulcast network or on track. First race, the Aquarius final. Escape the news. You bought him after Lexington last year. He's worked out real well. Yeah, no, he's a very nice horse. He reminds me a lot of Maltese Hardis. It's the first thing I said the first time I trained him. Same breed, same style. He's going to get better with age. He just has to learn to give full effort all the time. But Yannick's getting better at getting every pound of it out of him. And, uh, you know, it's tough with the outside. I don't know. Maybe we got to try to get around him. But, you know, maybe we'll just try to race from the back, too. Referring to Warrow, we need you from the rail. I'm sure he'll be gunning. It looks like the horse to beat there. Second race, looks like you got the market cornered. Number four, quick deal in the horse and groom. He is scary fast, but can you trust him to stay on stride? Yeah, it really hasn't been a problem since Yannick came up with a way of taking him to the gate. Two weeks ago, there was a new starter, and uh, he was waiting on us, and I don't think he understood that we usually like to charge the gate a little bit, so uh, the horse got put in a bad spot, and he will make mistakes when you do things he doesn't want to do, so, you know, I, I've got a good feel now that Yannick has a good feel for the horse, and I think he'll be fine. How good is this horse? I mean, th is this a uh, possible lucky gym or that sort of level? I don't know. Yannick keeps telling me how good he is. I, I kept thinking I've had I have two or three better than him, and you know I'm now I'm starting to wonder. So, you know he's a very good horse. He's very fast, and uh, the more he, good races he goes, the better good habits he'll get into, and the less we'll have to worry about him doing bad things. And you have a nice insurance policy in the horse and groom as well. With the three DWs, New York Yank has really improved. Yeah, he was actually, I think, better than he looked last week, too. You know, it's tough when you get caught in here behind a stopper and you got to check hard. People don't understand. Once you lose momentum here, it's so hard to restart him and get him going. So I actually think he was better than he even looked last week. Third race, number three, Arsenal back from Yonkers. Made a break over there, I believe. 
Yeah, he, do, he does that once in a while. You know, Arsenal's one of them horses, superstar one week, you know, trash pail next week. It's really hard to tell with him what you're going to get. We move out of the seventh race. Number two, Outrageous. Artie's won four in a row. Now, does your owner ever complain about your training? Because that's Yannick Gingrau, co-owns the horse. Nah, I do most of the complaining in our relationship. He uh, pretty much does most of the listening. So, you know, uh, Yannick picked this out. Yannick bought the horse and then uh, made sure we paid for the horse. But, you know... He's a nice horse. I really, really like that horse. Can he handle the class hike tonight? This is a tough class, but last week I was surprised when they weren't biting him as the favorite. I thought that was our best chance to win last week. I, I really think that horse hasn't reached his potential yet. Tenth race, number nine, uh, Marshall Bliss. I think it's supposed to be Marital Bliss. Somebody might have misspelled it. What about him? Yeah, you know, he's, this track will pick him up a lot. He doesn't get around turns at all right now. For what reason, I don't know. He doesn't hit a knee, but he just seems to struggle through turns. But, you know, there's few horses in here that are probably worth twice his value. So he's going to really have to step up to go with them. 11th race, number one, Morgan Shark. One of a handful you got from Joe Seekman about six weeks ago. Yeah, Joe's horses always come. They're always fit. They just look so nice and everything. And that Chicago circuit is way tougher than people think it is. That's a tough place to win races. So I think this horse is a good horse. And, uh, you know, off the rail, Yannick will put him in play. And he has a good chance in there. And finally, in the 12th race, number four, Rockaholic prepped at the Meadows, ready off one cue. He was awesome in the qualifier. I was shocked. That was a big mile that day. And that was the horse we thought he was when he was a two-year-old. And then he just came out and flubbed. So I don't know anymore what to think. He trained great the other day, you know, was raging and came from the back. And uh, maybe this colt, he's bred to go get better with age. He's from a family that gets a lot better with age. So maybe he could be better. Ronnie, you're a very busy guy. Do you ever get a chance to just chill out and relax? Yeah, I, I've learned more as I got older, you know, especially with my children. Uh, I'm going to Italy next week. My kid's playing in soccer over there for 10 days, and I'm going to go watch him play and stuff. And it'll make it harder to run the barn from over there. But you know, with phones and email and stuff, but you know, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm not gonna miss that for anything. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes to join us. Best of luck in the series finals tonight and here's hoping you have another great season in 2013. Ronnie Burke in the Sulky, a quick timeout and we'll tee up tonight's racing action.